Uh, so why have all these people turned up here this evening? Why has Eddie given up his time? And why do we now need to speak to you all about putting your hands in your pockets and doing something this evening for Amber? Well, the reason is because tonight you're all enjoying your fish and your steak and your lovely antipasti starters and your lovely wine. But there's a reason for doing that. And the reason, I'm going to sort of come down here so I can see everybody. The reason is the Amber Charity. And if you could all just bear with me for a minute, I just want to tell you a little bit about the charity. It's been running for 17 years. Now, 17 years isn't a particularly long time for a charity to be running, but this charity in that time has done amazing things. They now have not one, not two, but thanks to their fundraising efforts, three different homes now in the UK. Each home can look after 30 young people, which is 90 people staying in these homes at any one time. And people often say, well, you know, why is it called Amber? Why, why would you call it Amber? Well, the reason for that is because if you take a look at a set of traffic lights, you've got green for go, red for stop, and Amber is in the middle. And in many ways, Amber represents the middle part of a young person's life. And we're going to meet three of those in just a few moments. But Amber really takes people whose lives have effectively stopped and it tries to get them going again. But before you can go from red to green, you need Amber. And Amber is making a phenomenal difference to people's lives. They have an 80% success rate. Now, what counts as success for Amber is young people either leaving to go into employment, into accommodation in an area where they can get employment, or for young people to go to college. And you are about to meet three people who, without Amber, genuinely would not be where they are today. And last year, it cost the charity almost one and a half million pounds to do the work they do. So just keep that figure in mind this evening when you're thinking about the auction prizes, and we'll get onto those in just a moment. And I think the other really important thing to point out about Amber is it's not a charity that gets someone and goes, right, great, here's six weeks, we're gonna sort you out, we're gonna put you on a course, and then off you go. Young people come to Amber, they can stay as long as they want. They choose to stay about six months, but they can stay as long as they want. And I think that's really important. So let's please welcome three people up onto the stage. And it's a big deal to turn up here this evening. So please put your hands together for Jared, for Gary, and for Lindsay. Lindsay, I'm sorry about those cables. Have you seen the size of the heels that she's got on? Those heels and a load of cables is not a good combination. Uh, but let's have a, a, a bit of a chat with you guys. And Jared, we've actually met before. We were at a, an, another event where, where you were and we got chatting. Um, I know your story, but perhaps you wouldn't mind just explaining to the crowd here how you came to be at Amber. Um, I was 17. I got kicked out of my parents due to drinking a lot. Bad relationship with the partner of my mum's. Sofa surfing for eight months. I moved into my own flat, started getting into the drinking a bit too much, um, couldn't afford paying the rent, then I was two weeks homeless, then I got referred to Amber, which I've been there for 10 months so far. I'm planning to go in the army, but I've got to wait until next year. I've been 10 months clean, and I've got to wait another year, and I'll be able to go for the army. It's interesting when you go through your story, it's almost a throwaway comment for you, yeah, eight months, sofa surfing. Uh, what is it like for eight months having to ask your mates or your mates' mates or finding a park bench or somewhere just to lay your head at night? It's pretty horrible, really. You get a bad back after a while. <laughs> I think that's the least of your worries is a bad back. But it, it must be horrendous. And where do you think you would be if Amber hadn't come along and helped you? I'd probably be... Constantly going in and out of hospital, mm -hmm. drinking way too much. It's basically killing myself, really. And it's a big deal for you to step up here tonight. You were shaking when I put my arm around you at the beginning. Uh, but how much have you changed as a person since you've been at Amber? Because, you know, it is a big deal for you to get up here tonight and speak to people. Yeah, it's changed me a lot. Um, a lot fit and healthier. Mm. Made some really good friends. Great. Well, look, so much. Thank you so much for being here this evening and sharing your story with us. Jared, everybody. Well done, Jared. And listen, good luck making that break into the army. We all hope that it happens for you. So well done. And I'll come over here, actually, and have a word with, uh, have a word with Gary. It's a small stage for four bodies to move around on. Uh, but Gary, you were, you were what, 15, weren't you? I was 15. Yeah, I was 15 when I, um, I was 
family breakdown. Mm. Um, my parents didn't want me there anymore. Um, I was taking far too many drugs. Um, so yeah, they, they decided they'd had enough. You see, I'm 33 and I'd be lost now without my mum and dad. So when you're 15 and you hear from the people that have looked after you since you were young that they don't want you around anymore, how do you cope with that? Um, I don't really think you do. Um, I turned to drugs a lot more um, when they kicked me out. Uh, just went downhill from there, really. Um, I was sofa surfing. I've been in Amber. I'm 20 now. I moved into Amber five and a half months ago. Um, I spent the majority of that time since I was 15 moving from place to place. What, five, five years moving around? Um, I had a couple of, uh, of my own places, but they lasted a month or two at the most. Right. I mean, the majority of that time was from place to place, yeah. Um, wow. And for you, what's Amber done? Oh, completely changed my life. Um, I mean, it got me out of rut that I couldn't see myself getting out of. Um, I've seen the next, if I hadn't been there, I've seen the next 10 years doing exactly the same thing that I was doing then. Mm. Um, I'd spell in prison. I mean, I'd, I didn't know what I'd do. Mm. It, it's changed my life a hell of a lot. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much for stepping up here and talking to us tonight. <laughs> it's brilliant. And I, I think one other thing that I'd just like to, to ask you about. Yeah. Um, if Amber didn't exist, yeah. where else? Where else could you go? What are the other options apart from somewhere like Amber? There isn't. There's, there's nothing out there. Um, I mean, there's housing associations, but you're spending the whole time around the same people that you were before you went in there. Um, I mean, you can go privately, but in the situation that I was in, I mean, yeah, you get a place, but it doesn't work out. I mean, you can't get off what you're on or you can't stop doing what you're doing. So that goes down the pan. Um, so if it weren't for Amber, I'd, I have no idea where I'd be right now. And the future for you, what do you want it to be? What's your, what's your dream? Um, my dream is to be a swimming instructor. Um, I'm doing my lifeguarding course uh, at the beginning of the next month. Um, uh, swimming was a big part of my life before I started taking drugs, and I just want to be able to pass that on to younger kids and, and teach them. Remember this face. Hopefully, <laughs> he'll be working at a pool near you in the not-too-distant future. And Lindsay, if you wouldn't mind stepping in here, that would be great. You look petrified. We chatted earlier at the bar and you were chilled out, relaxing on the bar, having a conversation. It's fine. You're all friendly, right? Yes. Yeah? You're all friendly. Good. There you go. They're all friendly. So, Lindsay, you've, um, you've got quite a story, haven't you? Would you mind taking us back to Lindsay, aged 16, and giving us an example of what a day was like for you then? Okay. Um, I got involved with quite a violent guy who was on drugs and I ended up getting addicted to drugs too and I went to prison for three and a half years for a robbery and I knew when I got out on the halfway mark I had nowhere to go and I ended up in a hostel called Esther and you're just surrounded by other people still doing the same things and I ended up going back to prison for my licence so when I got out I got offered a place at Amber and it's the only place I know where it's, it's safe, it's out the way, it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And in terms of the drug abuse now, how is that? Um, I haven't used in over 18 months, so, yeah. And when was the last time you were able to say that you haven't taken drugs for a year and a half? Never from the age of 16. There you go. And that's a difference that Amber has made to your life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we spoke earlier on. You've got ambitions to get into Zumba, be a fitness instructor. Is that the plan? Yeah. I, um, I did a lot of gym in the prison. And then when I come out, I still go to Zumba now. Um, with one of the staff from Amber, she goes once a week and she takes me to Zumba. And it's really cool. And this is where we get you all off your chairs and doing some exercise. <laughs> No, it isn't. It isn't. The only exercise tonight is hands into wallets and back out again. Um, but before we, we start the auction, and we've heard from all three of you about how important Amber is, and I think the, the, you know, the message coming through is that without Amber, there isn't an alternative. It's not a case of I might go to Amber or I might go here. 
It's, I might go to Amber, or I might stay on the streets, or I might carry on taking drugs, or I might carry on sofa surfing, or I might carry on knowing what it feels like not to be loved by anybody. The positive thing is that there are three young people up here, and there are more than just three people being helped by Amber. Just to remind you, three homes, 30 spaces in each home. They're helping 90 people at any one given time. Um, and I think on behalf of all of those 90, and particularly the three up here, please put your hands together for Jared, for Gary, and for Lindsay. Congratulations, and very best of luck with the fitness instructing, with the army work, and also with the, uh, the swimming coaching. Well done. A round of applause for them.